When you look up articles on Graham Farrar, you see adjectives being used like trailblazer, entrepreneur, and pioneer. But never has anyone mentioned the word smuggler. We had the chance recently to sit down with Graham and interview him for this episode of Beyond the Grow and learn some very interesting things that most people do not know about this quote unquote drug dealer, turned tech mogul, turned medicine farmer. Hey there, I'm Nick Morin, creator of Canna Cribs, and welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Grow, the series where we dig a little deeper into the lives and stories of the amazing people we meet while producing Canna Cribs. So join us as we explore the stories that got the top cannabis growers and breeders where they are today. Cannacrib shows you how they do it. Now, let's show you why they do it in Beyond the Grow. Beyond the Grow is brought to you by the top brands in the game. We have five categories today we want to highlight to help you elevate your craft. Nutrients by Hydroponic Research, IPM by Lost Coast Plant Therapy, Packaging by Dispo, Consulting by Canacribs Horticulture Consulting, and Climate Control by Quest. Thank you to these partners for helping us create this show and helping us bring more knowledge to the world. If you want to support Beyond the Grow, head on over to the link in the description or go to growershouse.com and check out these industry leaders today. Aside from the unique historical relationship we have with Graham, Canacribs and Graham Farrar share far more in common than you might think. Back in 2016, Graham opened up his doors to our team of content creators and allowed us to film the first ever Canacribs pilot episode at his first greenhouse in Carpinteria, California. More on that later. But for now, let's dive into where it all began. Graham recalls his first experience with cannabis was in third grade. He and his friend came across some dried out cannabis leaves underneath the sink in his buddy's house. Not knowing what they were doing, the two kids said, hey, let's crush these leaves up and smoke them. They actually rolled up drawing paper and smoked it. Nothing but burnt lungs and lots of coughing ensued, and the pair never tried that again, or at least not for a long time. Fast forward to his high school years in Santa Barbara in 1992. Like almost every high school in America back in the 90s, weed had found its way onto most campuses. This was the era of the quote unquote war on drugs propaganda that was pointing a grim light on cannabis users. But seeing that cannabis wasn't having a negative effect on his friends, the way it was being portrayed made Graham start to think. The more he dug, the more he realized everything he was being told back in those days was the opposite of how cannabis was actually affecting society. A belief that has continued to be proven out by recent research. It turns out in fact that adults who smoke weed are less prone to violence and they're more creative. Smokers exercise more, not less and have lower levels of obesity, not more. What Graham started to see was that oftentimes people who consume cannabis are a better version of themselves, not worse. Not to mention the reduction in the need for opiates for pain relief and the reduction in alcohol addiction overall. It wasn't the gateway drug into more addiction. In fact, it was often a gateway out. Being that Santa Barbara was only a few hours north of the U.S.-Mexico border, Graham started seeing bricks of weed from Mexico popping up around town. So this young entrepreneur took it upon himself to start his own small import business. He would drive down to the border and pick up a half pound of brick weed from friends in San Diego and then drive it back home and after removing the sticks and stems, parceled it out into eighths, ready for sale. With that profit, Graham then purchased the higher grade BC Beasters bud that would eventually dominate the market later in that decade. Little by little, young Graham already started to recognize that something he loved could also be a profitable business. From a very young age, Graham was super interested in computers. When he got his first Apple Mac SE, rather than just play Pong like most other kids did, 
he wanted to understand how it all worked. And in no time at all, he could take it apart and reassemble the motherboard. This newly learned skill for problem solving and fixing things was very valuable back in the 80s. So Graham did what Graham always does, and by the age of 12, he started his own tech repair business for friends and family who needed help setting up their computers. But more on this later. Let's get back to the weed growing part of the story. Hey, thanks for watching the episode today. Did you know that we have a consulting division? We actually help design and build some of the most productive commercial facilities that you see right here on YouTube. If you need help building, retrofitting, or optimizing your commercial grow, hit that link in the description below and fill out the form. Now back to the episode. Although cannabis was becoming a money-making venture, due to the fact that it was still very illegal to possess, it was still mainly a side hobby for Graham at this point in his life. He had his sights set on going to the University of Colorado Boulder to study molecular biology and biochem. Once he made it to Boulder, Graham decided to explore his love for biology and science and began to grow cannabis indoors in a controlled environment. His first grow was inside a 2 by 3 closet in his college apartment. This first tiny setup was fully automated ebb and flow hydro system with mylar walls, CO2 supplementation, and an exhaust system. It was very exciting to him as it involved technology and biology, and hey, it resulted in something he loved, great weed to smoke. With this 600 watt 2x3 setup, Graham was able to produce about a $5,000 pound of cannabis every four months or so. Back in those days, having an extra 20K coming in every year was like winning the lottery for a young college student. It is the same concept behind these ebb and flow hydroponic systems he was using back in those days that are now being used today in his significantly larger facilities in Camarillo. Graham jokes about how some of these earnings from his first cannabis venture actually helped afford him the first few dates that eventually landed him his amazing wife Sarah. After some time had passed in Boulder, Graham received word about a job opportunity from an old friend of his back in Santa Barbara. This job would combine his savvy business mind with his love of tech at a newly forming company called Software.com. Getting in early with a successful tech company back in the 90s played a key role in his life, as this job granted him some company stock and a ton of real-world experience in a booming industry. Software.com eventually went public, which meant Graham had some money to invest in other ventures. Fast forwarding a couple of years later, Graham decided to purchase a few properties in Santa Barbara. With his longtime friend and grower Jason, these properties slowly began to fill with weed. Month after month and year after year, Graham dug deeper into the love of the plant. Again, seeing how people's lives were being positively affected by this amazing healing plant, Graham decided to invest more of his time and efforts into the cannabis industry. In 2015, Graham partnered with Kyle, who initially was his landlord and first investor, and founded Glasshouse Farms, a 150,000 square foot greenhouse operation, as well as co-founded a nutrient line called Elite. The Elite story was founded with the desire to bring tech and agriculture together. Graham and his partners saw a gap in critical nutrient combinations and a lack of modern technology that could help cultivators track and calculate nutrient dilutions more accurately. So, in addition to bringing a better nutrient product line into the industry, he also developed app-based software that allowed farmers to view their grow and bloom charts right on their phones, which was a first for the industry at the time. And as you may have guessed, this is where Canacribs comes into the story. About a year later, Graham and his partners invited us out to go film their facility. And at that point in time, it was kind of new. It was unique. Not a whole lot of growers were open to the idea of showcasing their facility to the world. You can check out this episode on our Growers Network YouTube channel here. It's Canacribs episode one. It's our pilot episode at Glasshouse Farms. 
So a huge thank you to Graham for giving us this opportunity, which has allowed us to go around the country and film many more farms, educating millions of people around the world. So where does that leave us now? Today, Graham sits on top of a California cannabis empire. In 2018, Farrar was awarded one of three adult use dispensaries in the city of Santa Barbara. In 2019, the pharmacy SB was born. By late 2021, Graham and Kyle had took the company public, which afforded them the opportunity to purchase an additional 125 acre, 5.5 million square foot greenhouse facility in Camarillo, California. So in total, as of today, if you combine everything, Glasshouse owns approximately 6 million square feet of glass houses. 2 million of that is filled with some of the finest weed on the market. And the remaining 4 million is still growing, quote unquote, tomatoes. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually legit tomato production. A far cry from that little two by three closet back in Boulder. Nonetheless, Graham will continue to push boundaries and break down walls until federal legalization is a real thing. As a pragmatist, Graham sees that not all states will be ideal for growing cannabis. Much of the cultivation of cannabis will most likely remain in California. Manufacturing will end up where it is cheapest produced on a national scale, and the stores, the dispensaries, will be where the people are. Graham predicts that when the walls come down, we will see a similar business model as the wine industry or strawberries. And in both cases, if you look at it, California supplies more than 90% of the domestic supply. Wherever you are in the country, you will have access to the finest California sun-grown cannabis. And according to Graham, if everything plays out according to the plan, it will likely be a Glasshouse brand's flower you will be smoking. Thanks again for watching. We truly appreciate your support for our channel. If you haven't already, please give us a like, subscribe, hit that comment button, let us know what you think, and I'll see you on the next one. Beyond the Grow is brought to you by the top brands in the game. We have five categories today we want to highlight to help you elevate your craft. Nutrients by Hydroponic Research, IPM by Lost Coast Plant Therapy, Packaging by Dispo, Consulting by Canacribs Horticulture Consulting, and Climate Control by Quest. Thank you to these partners for helping us create this show and helping us bring more knowledge to the world. If you want to support Beyond the Grow, head on over to the link in the description or go to growershouse.com and check out these industry leaders today.